Okay, bone broth is right now a hot topic in health science. But is it really the superfood so many people claim it is? Let's look at the science. Bone broth is made by boiling bones and connective tissue for many hours. And its use actually dates back many thousand years. In ancient European and Asian cultures, bone broth was used to treat all kinds of illnesses and diseases. However, to really understand what makes bone broth so healthy, we need to look at all the components that are inside bone broth. So it is incredibly rich in some good proteins and amino acids like collagen, gelatin, glycine, glycosaminoglycans, proline and glutamine, as well as many essential minerals. While there are only a few studies that use bone broth as a whole food, there are many studies that use these different components of bone broth and check for its health benefits. Studies found, for instance, that collagen improves skin quality and helps with joint pain in athletes. Cooking bones and connective tissue breaks down most of the collagen into gelatin. And research studies have shown that gelatin can be very beneficial for gut health and powerful in reducing inflammation. Studies in animals have also shown that gelatin supplementation helps to protect against inflammatory bowel disease by reducing gut permeability and by changing the microbiome. Bone broth is also rich in glycosaminoglycans, which are complex carbohydrates that are essential for healthy joints. The amino acid glycine makes up big parts of collagen, and there is a bunch of research studies showing its positive effects on health. It starts with the fact that glycine stimulates the production of gastric acid and thereby improves our digestion. Another study found that glycine supplementation improves oxidative stress in patients with metabolic syndrome and thereby reducing blood pressure. This is probably because glycine is one of the amino acids required for glutathione synthesis, which is the body's main antioxidant that prevents damage caused by reactive oxygen species. In a 2014 review, Dr. McCarthy and Dr. Di Nicolantonio talk about the cardiometabolic benefits of glycine and name glycine as the antidote to fructose, which is a major driver of heart diseases. Glycine has also been shown to reduce the size of heart effects in animal models. Another important function of glycine is that it acts as an inhibitory neurotransmitter, which helps to reduce anxiety, promotes calmness, and even potentially improves sleep, like in this study. Human volunteers who have been continuously experiencing unsatisfactory sleep took 3 grams of glycine before bed. Their sleep quality improved, the time they needed to fall asleep decreased and they were more alert during the day. There is also some evidence that glycine helps to calm down the immune system and speeds up recovery, which is probably the reason why your grandma tried to give you bone broth when you were sick as a kid. Proline is another amino acid that is found in high concentrations in collagen and it is important for wound healing, antioxidative stress reactions and immune responses. Last but not least there is glutamine, which is another abundant amino acid found in collagen. Glutamine is actually pretty well studied for its positive effects on gut health and I feel like it deserves a video on its own, so I'm gonna skip the benefits right here. While there are not many studies that use bone broth directly, I think that most of the components of bone broth show very promising health benefits. Unfortunately, this is simply the nature of scientific studies, as we scientists always want to know the exact molecule that causes the effect. But instead of buying like 10 different supplements, you might just want to consider getting some good old fashioned bone broth or making it yourself and just cover all the components at once. Okay, that's it for today. In the next two videos, we will talk about the health benefits of glutamine and we will also talk about how the microbiome interacts with our immune system, which has huge implications in autoimmune diseases and also inflammatory diseases. So make sure to subscribe. See you next time and thank you for watching.